Hi, in this short video, I'm going to go over a part of section 4.4 in the AS Marine Syllabus. And this is the biotic and abiotic factors uh, concerning biodiversity. And if you're using uh, the Marine Science book from Cambridge, it's page 129 to 130 I will be covering here. So in chapter 3 in the book, we talk a lot about the different biotic factors and how different organisms can affect each other. That could be predation, that could be competition, and so on. There are many biotic and abiotic factors that will affect the distribution of organisms. Um, and we are going to go a little more in detail uh, here about two examples about competition and predation. So here we have a classic example from the intertidal zone about two different barnacles. Both of them has <coughs> a fundamental niche, as we can see. The fundamental niche is where they would grow if nothing else was there stopping them. And here we can see the catalamus, and I do apologize for my Latin, but butchering Latin, would be able to live all the way from the surface of the water and as far down here as we can see on the picture. It can live there, but when it's in competition with Semibalanus, it can only live in the upper area, because below that it will be outcompeted by the more aggressive or larger barnacle. So here we see in competition, one species will often have a smaller realized niche than its fundamental niche, as competition or other factors will go in and limit um, the available space, in this case here, for the organism. A classic example involving predation is the sea star and the blue mussel. Again, blue mussels can live across the intertidal zone. The further down they are in the water, Actually, the easier it is for the blue mussel to live. Blue mussels, although they can survive above water, they really don't like it there. They much rather be below water. But below water, we also have the sea stars who predate on the blue mussels. So if we have sea stars there, the blue mussels' realized niche becomes more towards um, the top of the tidal zone because the sea stars are less tolerant of drought than the blue mussels. So you can say that the blue mussels escape into an area that is not good for them, but it's worse for their predator. A lot of other biotic factors can go in and have a influence on where organisms live. Uh, we talked about symbiosis, parasites, commercialism and mutualism earlier in chapter 3. But just for an example, uh, if you have two uh, organisms who have a symbiotic relationship, them living together is an advantage. So if one of them is missing, that can limit the distribution of the other organism. We also have diseases in the marine environment. Diseases are illness caused by specific pathogens, that could be a virus, fungi, or bacteria. Diseases result in a decrease in the marine population of the affected species. Um, here we see an example of the stony coral tissue loss disease, which is a, is a disease that causes uh, small colonies of hard coral to die within weeks. Um, Now, competition can be between members of the same species, and it can also be between members of different species. Just to make everything a lot harder here, we have used, we're going to use two words which sound almost the same, but mean something different. Intra-specific competition is individuals of the same species, and inter-specific competition is members of different species. So, for example, competition between two lobsters for mating rights is intra-specific competition, where competition between, um, let's say, orcas and 
um, uh, shocks for food is interspecific competition. In biology, we have what is called the competitive exclusion principle. And the idea is that you can't have two species be in direct competition in a stable ecosystem. If you have two species who compete for the exactly same thing, one of the two species will do better and will start out competing the other. We sometimes see that when uh, introduced species come to a habitat and start out competing uh, the original species. We also sometimes see, as, as we did with the barnacles, that then one species will choose a different location. But if we have two species in the same location competing for the same thing, the principle of competitive exclusion says that one of them will be outcompeted. Different abiotic factors will also really have a huge influence on what species we'll find. Uh, geological features is one of them. We already talked about the big difference between, for example, a rocky coast and a sandy coast. But physical features such as temperature, air, sunlight, waves, tides, currents and turbidity will matter a whole lot. For example, when we talk about coral reefs, Coral reefs are really picky. They want the right temperature, they want no exposure to air, they want the right amount of sunlight, not too many waves, uh, and they want clean water, so no turbidity. Chemical factors can also have a huge effect. That can be pH, salinity, oxygen, carbon dioxide, and nutrients. And again, if you ever tried growing corals in a tank, you know they're also very picky here. They want just the right pH, salinity, and so on. Now, we earlier talked about limiting factors. Any of these can be a limiting factor. So let's say we are looking at the growth of phytoplankton. Well, there's a huge chance that either sunlight or nutrients will be the limiting factor for the amount of phytoplankton that will be growing in this area. Or if you look at mussels living on a rocky coast, well then waves and tides can be the factor limiting the size of the population. 